Keep the mask on uh, for, for that, for our worship time. Uh, in a moment, the band will call us to worship. We we'll invite you to meditate on their song uh, as they lead us. Uh, we're going to sing it, uh, to think about it, to let it call us and uh, remind us that we are in the Lord's presence. So let's pray. Gracious Lord, we, we do want to take a minute and remind our souls, remind ourselves that we are with you. Lord, we're so grateful that there is nowhere we can go to get away from you. You are always with us. But yet, Lord, too often we, we forget that. We don't act like it. We, we don't feel it. So, Lord, we ask you here and now to, to remind us of your presence. Lord, help us to, to act like we are in the presence of our King, our Savior, our best friend. Help us, Lord, to feel that we are in your presence, the, the presence of the Creator, the Almighty One, the One who gives us life, who saves our souls, who leads us into eternity. Lord, help us to offer everything we have to you as we hear your word, as we pray. Lord, as we remember the, the people we love who've gone home to be with you. 
Lord, as we praise. Thank you, Lord, for always being with us. In Christ's name, amen.
that's our prayer today, that you would take us deeper into you, that you would teach us about you, but Lord, not just that we would learn, not that we would just put new knowledge in our head, but rather, Lord, that we would experience you in such a way that that knowledge changes our lives. Lord, I believe you want to change us, and you don't want to stop. You want to change this world. So, Lord, we, we dive into your word together today that you may teach us, that you may change us. This world will be changed. Amen. So, I was eavesdropping this past week. Because as preachers, we do that sometimes. And also because this makes a great story to transition. As the band walks off, it doesn't really matter. It's a throwaway story. And if you're distracted as they're leaving, then it's okay. So it's a, it's a, I'm, I'm giving you my preacher's tricks. But I was eavesdropping on this conversation because preachers, anytime, you know, someone says the Bible or something, you know, preachers just kind of like zoom in, you know. And I, I'm, I'm somewhere, and someone always starts talking about how they, they don't read the Bible much, but they started reading the book of Revelation. And I thought, ooh, brother, um, you, you, I could have given you a better place to start. <laughs> um, you know, talking about how he doesn't really understand it a whole lot. I, yeah, yeah I, I, I believe that. You know, people who have studied it for years still, you know, say it's, it's hard to understand. Um, but what you have to do to really understand the book of Revelation is you have to understand the people to whom it was written, those first century Christians. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that because I'm going to read to you from Revelation this morning. This is Revelation chapter 7. Uh, verses 9 through 17. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Can I get an amen on that? That's, that's a good one. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white? Where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one who knows. And he said to me, They are those who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship Him day and night within His temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them or any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and He will guide them to springs of water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The people who first received this letter, first Christians, were undergoing persecution. For many years, as the Christian movement grew, it was seen as a sect of Judaism, the Jewish religion. And the Jewish religion under Roman law had certain protections because the Romans liked old things. Any of y'all like antiques? Heading over to the antique thing, the antique uh, uh, um, yeah. flea market, but um, auction. auction. That's right. Bill, Bill's uh, auction. Thank you. Brent knows well enough. He's like, I know what he means. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah, they, they got the antique auction. There are all these flea markets. People love antiques. Well, the Romans were kind of the same way. They loved anything that was old. Anything that was old had a certain amount of deference given to it. So the Jewish faith, because it could trace itself all the way back to Moses and even further back to Abraham, thousands of years, uh, received a certain amount of privileged place in the Roman Empire because it was, it was an antique. It was old. And for many years, as Christianity grew, it was just seen as a sect of Judaism. Jesus was the Jewish Messiah. But then something crazy happens, and all of a sudden Jesus becomes just the Messiah. Gentiles start believing in Christ, and so Christianity uh, moves outside of that circle of protection of being part of this old religion, Judaism, and all of a sudden the Romans kind of reclassify Christianity as a new religion, and we don't like new. 
Okay, the Roman Empire, they loved their antiques and they hated anything new and upstarting. And so Christianity, especially in parts of the Middle East and Northern Africa, came under severe persecution in the latter part of the, of the first century. In fact, there are places where Christians could not go to buy and sell in marketplaces. There are Christians who could have their property taken away from them for meeting to worship Christ. There, there are places where people were having a hard time putting food on the table and clothes on their families' backs because they were Christians and the persecution that they were undergoing. Life was hard for these people. And remember, Revelation is written on an island called Patmos because John is in exile. He's been put on a prison island. He is in exile for his faith. It's to these Christians, these persecuted, struggling Christians who feel like the dragon of Rome is bearing down on them that this book is written to. Now, if you're reading Revelation and you've read the first six chapters, uh, you're going, wow, this doesn't sound very uplifting for these Christians. <laughs> Jesus shows up. That's uplifting, right? But then Jesus gives them some words and they're seven, written to seven churches. And out of the seven churches, guess how many churches he's got good words for? One. There is one church doing what they're supposed to be doing, according to Jesus, in the first chapters of the book of Revelation. And, and then we have this gorgeous scene of heavenly worship. And it is, it is amazing. It is, and it is focused in on the one who sits on the throne which makes sense. Worship should be focused on the one sitting on the throne, right? But it's this gorgeous description of the, of the throne and of heaven. And then it, it kind of zooms out a little bit and you get, the, you get the, the angels of heaven and they're these crazy creatures with wings and eyes and heads of lions and they're flying around the throne saying, holy, 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 praising God. And it zooms out a little bit more and you get these 24 elders on thrones and we're not real sure, are they human elders? Are they angel elders? Are they heavenly? We're we just know there's 24 elders on thrones there. And it is this amazing, gorgeous scene of heavenly worship. There's not a whole lot of people there. Then there's these seals that are broken. And none of them good news. There are pestilence, war, bad, bad news. Then we get to chapter 7. In the first verses of chapter 7, you notice we started in verse 9. The first eight, cha eight verses of chapter 7 is about 145 sealed that there will be 144,000 people who are saved and maybe the, the early Christians read that and go oh thank goodness <laughs> some of us get in right <laughs> we haven't seen any people yet up in heaven uh, we're not sure that we're sure about yet and this okay there's at least 144,000 of them maybe may, maybe we're in that group and then all of a sudden it zooms out even more and all of a sudden we realize it's not just 144,000 people there Rather, it is a multitude of multitudes. It is a number of people so vast they can't even be counted. And they come from every nation, every tribe, every people, every language is being used to praise God there. They, you zoom out and all of a sudden it is this mass of humanity around this throne singing and praising. They're waving their palm branches because adults wave palm branches too. It's my hobby horse on Palm Sunday. Give the palms to all the little kids and they get to have all the fun. <laughs> Everyone's waving their branches. Everyone's praising God. And don't you know those early Christians when finally they get to verse 9 of chapter 7, even though they weren't really divided like that back then, but let's just say they were. When they got to verse 9 of chapter 7, they went, Hallelujah! There's hope! Those people, our loved ones who have died for their faith, they're there. We, we are going there. Even though Rome is trying to crush us now, even though it's hard to put food on the table and clothes on our backs, someday we'll have white robes and palm branches. It's the hope of this vision. Don't you know it felt like a soothing balm, like water on parched lips to finally get to the middle of chapter 7 in the book of Revelation. That's the context that it came to. But you see, the, the Word of God, it keeps coming, right? It's just not for them back then. 
It's for you and me, too. So what's our context? Well, I'm glad you asked. I mean, we're in the middle of a pandemic. I can't even tell if you're, some of you are smiling at me because we're, we're wearing masks. And I affirm that decision, by the way, I was, uh, uh, because I, I think they're helpful. I think they're good. But I was, I was walking through the sanctuary before the 830 service. And one of my, the most dear people in the world to me, a lady named Maggie Courtney, uh, just, just such a blessing to me. Um, so prayerful and just a great teacher and, and um, encourager. And she was sitting on the aisle and she was wearing her mask and I'm wearing my mask. And I'm walking down the aisle and I had to stop and say, Maggie, I am smiling at you. <laughs> right? Because you can't tell, right? You know? Um, that, that's, that's where we are right now. We have this, this pandemic that has so many people scared, that has, us, uh, 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 has a lot of people isolated. You know, you know, me, I, I'm okay. I get to go home to a house full of people. I can use more isolation sometimes. <laughs> Laura's like, preach. <laughs> my, my, my wife, she's awesome at t- taking care of our family. And, and I, but s- not everyone gets to do that. Some people, they go home and they're by themselves. I've had a lot of people tell me that they've really started talking to the Lord a whole lot more because <laughs> they're at home by themselves. Some of them, you know, stuck with, fa- stuck with spouses or, you know. Just, we, we, we're going through a time that's difficult. Now, I, I don't think Christ- Christians were undergoing the same kind of difficulty as those early Christians in first century. We're not being killed for our faith. But it doesn't mean that life is easy. We have the pandemic that has us isolated, that has, that has us scared. Hundreds of thousands of our own people in our nation have died, not to mention around the world. There's societal unrest. We turn on the news and there's protests and there's marches. And unfortunately, some of those turn violent where there is violence and unrest. There's societal unrest because there's so much polarization in our world. There's this horrible political polarization that's happening. That's dangerous to talk about this week, right? Because what's, you know, something going on this week. A little something going on this week. Uh, just a little something, yes. I've been stressed eating since last Tuesday. We have a, a world where it seems like people would rather yell at each other than try and work out compromises and understand each other. Today, we remember people. We're going to see a list of 17 people of our own church who have died. I won't lie to you, it was a hard list to get through in the 30 service. I don't promise not to cry in this one. That's our context today. Sadness and tears, difficulty, even though we can mix it with joy and celebration. And today we remember the, a great, that great crowd in Revelation. We remember that great crowd because, well, we're going to read names of people who are there now. And we remember that someday we'll be there too. We have the hope of John, of his vision, of people of every people group. That's what that word means, people group, a language group. That someone from every language group, every people group in this world will be gathered around that throne. We can rejoice because we have the assurance of salvation. We have the assurance of a place among the tribes and nations and peoples around that throne. We have the assurance that the names that we're going to read, that they were in Christ Jesus and they are there. And that we have the grace and the privilege to tell other people about Christ so that they can be there. So we're going to feast today. Admittedly, the amount of food is not much of a feast. But the spiritual thing that we do in coming to this table and remembering what Christ has done for us and enacting his salvation and truly believing that God is with us in a special way in these elements because he promised to, right? Not, not because we're so good or we say so, but because he said to do this in remembrance of him. Today, we're going to go a little, uh, a little different than how we normally do this. I'd like to invite the band to come back up. And we're going to, to have our time of prayer to pray over these uh, bits of juice, bits of bread. Uh, they are these little prepackaged deals. So you'll just peel the first uh, 
cellophane thingy here. That take you can take your bread, then peel the second one, and that'll get you to your juice. I ask that uh, we'll serve everyone, and once you have served, go ahead and get it ready, but don't eat yet, and don't drink yet. Let's wait till after the song so that we can all take together the sign of our unity in Christ. Uh, so once we get to that point, uh, uh, we will serve uh, these. You will be served. We'll bring them to you in your place, uh, Kathy uh, and me. Am I helping too? Okay, excellent. Excellent, I am. Um, we'll be bringing them to you, and uh, you and uh, we'll uh, wait for everyone to keep, be served, open it up, and take it together. We're going to use the words of our liturgy uh, from the United Methodist uh, Book of Worship uh, the, on this holy day, All Saints Day, because they're just words that I think we need to hear on a day like today. And there's places for you to participate as well, so uh, watch the screens for where you speak as well. Would you pray with me? The Lord be with you. Do we have that in there? We're in the liturgy. There we go. Okay. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, creator of heaven and earth. God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I invite you to sing together. What will it be like when my pain is gone? All the worries of this world just fade away What will it be like When you call my name And that moment and I see you face to face I'm waiting my whole life to hear you say Well done good and faithful one welcome to the place where you belong well done well done my beloved child you have run the race and now you're home welcome to the place where you took bread. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. And likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, take, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. What will it be like? The tears are washed away And every broken thing will finally be what will it be like when I come into your glory, standing in the presence of a love so beautiful, waiting my whole life for that day? I will live my life to hear you say, 
gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood by your spirit make us one with Christ one with each other and one in ministry to all the world till Christ comes in final victory and we feast in his heavenly banquet renew our communion with all your saints especially those we name before you now. I want to invite you to stand as we remember our brothers and sisters who this past year have gone home to be with the Lord. Sybil Stroud Fikes. Jackie Iflin. Jarrett Jerry Melvin. Ruby Etheridge Watson Wells. Diana Salmon. Jose Ray Chavez. Doyle Dingus. John Donald Don Simmons. Violet Webster. Helen Barrow Parkton. Charles Michael Mike Sorrels. Mary Lou Goodman. Linda Littlefield Turner. Gail Hunter Young. Virginia Lou Malone. Garlena Smith. Russell Garfield Gary Rickard. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, Strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. We give you thanks, O Lord, for this holy mystery in which you've given yourself to us. Grant, Lord, that we can leave this place in the strength of your power to give ourselves for others. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Kathy's going to come by with a little container to take up. Let's continue praising God together. Like when I hear that sound all, all of heaven's angels crying out singing holy come forward and tell us what's going on at the church this week. You guys can have a seat. Have a seat. This week, the bells are going to meet on Monday at 515. And then on Wednesday, the choir is going to meet um, at 615 to work on the cantata happening December the 20th um, at both the 830 and 11 o'clock service will be in the sanctuary that day, though. So if you're interested and you'd like to contribute your wonderful singing voice, to the cantata, please join them um, on Wednesday at 6.15. And if you have any questions, you can call the church office and ask for Brian, and he can give you all the answers that you need. Um, so because I do announcements, I get the perk of talking about the children's ministry. If you have extra candy that you don't want your children to have or just some that you did not give out, um, I would love to take that off your hands. Uh, we will be participating in the uh, Christmas parade this year. Um, and any donation of candies is always absolutely welcome and wonderful, please. And then last but not least, the last two songs that we'll be singing next. Um, you Just can one. stand up. Huh? Just one more. I'm sorry. One today because we've already sang one. Um, please stand up. Please worship. If you choose to sing, please leave your mask on. Um, and then once we are done, you go ahead and exit the room and we can gather and talk outside. And uh, one last thing, the black boxes are over there in the corner. Um, for you to give as God's laid on your heart today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Kathy. You guys can stand. Let's praise our King.
the symphony in my ears It's like holy water on my skin Tell me what I can say to sin I want to know about being born again I need you Oh you so much for forgiving us and thank you for giving us your son and and God the grace is just overwhelming and thank you for this week thank you for this message God and I ask that you'd go before us and be with us in every step that we take with you God and we just love you and we praise you and give all glory and honor to you Jesus Christ amen thank you guys so much you're dismissed